Namaste, beloved. I'm Akasha Indigo Ray, and um, we are having an extremely rainy, wet day here in Sacramento. So it's a little bit dull outside, but the light was making a weird glare. So hopefully this isn't too annoying. There's still kind of a glare on the side. Um, but I'm coming to you today. Um, I was supposed to post a video yesterday, but I wanted to actually wait until today because today is the festival of Bastet. And Bastet is the um, ancient Kemetic, which we call um, the land of Kemet, Egypt. But Bastet is the ancient Kemetic goddess. Um, she is represented as um, a woman with the head of a domestic cat. Um, in earliest times, she was represented having a lion's head, but she was later softened when Sekhmet, um, when they were separated as deities. So Bastet was my first matron when I first started practicing witchcraft. After I had kind of made the leap into personified deity. She was the first deity that came to me and connected with me, and she's been with me ever since. There are times when she's more uh, radio silent, but she's always present. And I've never removed her totally from uh, a shrine. She's always had some sort of shrine wherever I've lived, regardless of which um, goddess I'm working with at the time. And I actually have a tattoo on my upper back. I can't really show you. It's really too hard to do that, but I have a tattoo in her likeness on my back. I'm going to slide over out of this glare. Um, I have a tattoo of her on my back, and that was done as a covenant between she and I um, for a spell that I did. Not really a spell, more of um, I entreated her to support me in bringing some things into my life and she asked me for an offering as sometimes deities will do now a deity should never ask you for an offering that is either against any of your ethical practices or involves any kind of harm I know in some African spiritual traditions there are animal sacrifices but from what I have studied those sacrifices are usually um, done in a very holy way and then those animals are prepared as meals and the community then eats the animal um, which I, I don't know I'm not gonna get involved in that but I think in general if you're gonna have the anyway I'm not gonna step into the political arena of that I personally don't practice animal sacrifice as a vegetarian um, but so just if you're new to working with deity, it's not unreasonable for a deity to ask you for some sort of offering. It's more of a, um, more of an interpersonal or internal acknowledgement that you are walking, Mr. Bugs, hush, whining dog. It's more of an internal recognition of your commitment to receive guidance from that deity. So depending on what you're working on. Um, sorry. <laughs> so professional, right? I am cooking and my oven just went off. So forgive me, but you're gonna walk with me to the kitchen to turn off the oven timer. <laughs> so my food doesn't overcook. I'm cooking um, food that I'm going to partake as a part of the Feast of Bastet. So as I was saying, it's not unreasonable for a deity to ask you for some sort of acknowledgement of their commitment to work with you and your commitment to receive guidance from them. But it should always be something that's within your power to give. And they're only going to ask you for something that... Um, becomes self-identified. So she asked me what I would offer her um, in exchange for a covenant um, with her. And it was my decision to get a tattoo. Um, and I told her, you know, that I really want to, I, I had already had the practice of 
getting tattoos to represent parts of my spiritual journey and I didn't have any tattoos to represent deity and I thought that would actually be a really fitting tribute to her but also a beautiful reminder of my first matron so I got I offered her uh, a tattoo and she was very pleased <laughs> that was you know what I wanted to offer her and she promised me that she would always walk with me wherever I go so I've worked with many different gods and goddesses at this point. I've worked with different forms of deity. I've worked with no deity. I've worked with thought forms, but Bast has always been present with me. And I'm going to show you my altar right now. She's on my altar. That's Bastet. And in this version of her, she is fully cat uh, in her cat form. And I've got some candles back there, green and white candles, which are, um, green is one of her colors, also black and red and silver. So I do have all of the elements of her colors on the altar, um, gold also, and brass, items of brass. And um, in that back, there's my book. I've also got an unk on the altar. And there's a bass jar in the back. A bass jar is basically a ceramic jar um, that's got kind of a lid that sits down inside of it kind of looks a little bit like a large honey pot and they were used to keep fragrances so that brings me a little bit to what she's the goddess of right kind of far into the video so Bastet is considered to be uh, a goddess of fertility divine femininity feminine sensuality and prowess She's a protectress of all women, children, and cats. Um, in ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet, it was considered a, a sin, a holy sin, to kill a cat. And if it was found that someone killed a cat, they could be sentenced to death. Right, Jazzy? <laughs> she agrees. Um as she's showing me her butt and walking away. Um, so she is a protectress of cats as well, and all cats were considered sacred to Bastet. She's a shapeshifter, so she was a in the form of a beautiful, gorgeous, sensual, sexy goddess um, who changed form into a desert cat um, at the sundown, and she would race across the plains to protect Ra, who is the sun god or sun ray, right? So she would race across the plains to protect Ra from enemies that wanted to learn um, Ra's real name in order to supplant him. So she would protect Ra from being harmed by other deities that wanted to supplant him as the head of the pantheon or the, the head god in charge. Um, so she's also called the Eye of Ra. Um, what else? What else? She wears a scarab. So scarabs are also sacred to her. And a scarab is a particular type of beetle that grows out of the mud. So scarabs are representative of um, opportunities, potential, um, surviving hardship, flourishing even in um, hard circumstances. Um, so scarabs are considered a really important and sacred um, insect in Kemetic uh, spirituality and in, in Kemet in general. And I keep saying Kemet because the original lands of the Nile were called Kemet. And when the Europeans traveled there, when the Greeks traveled there, um, there was a city called Egyptos. And so they called the entire land Egypt, but that's actually not correct. The entire land surrounding the Nile, um, uh, Tigris and Euphrates rivers, uh, was called Kemet. And then there's Nubia and there's a lot of other parts, right? So <clears throat> Bast, um, today, April 15th, is the day that she celebrated. She, her largest cult, um, and I say cult meaning group of celebrators and followers, um, priestesses who worked with her energy and spread her gospels and protected cats and um, 
helped to advance feminine studies and feminine expression and all of that. Um, the largest group of her um, priestesses lived in the city of Bubastis, and that is still the there is still a temple in Bubastis, and so that is the largest concentration of her priestesses. She's still celebrated today. And a uh, little known fact, the um, DC, I think it's DC Comics, sorry if I'm wrong, but the DC comic book character of Catwoman actually was uh, the prototype for Catwoman or where Catwoman was derived was from Best, a woman who becomes a cat um, and is very agile. So she represents all of the things that we associate with cats, right? Agility, the ability to land on our feet, how um, uh, resilient the female spirit is, um, the natural feminist leanings of powerful women, um, how cats can be aloof and private and to themselves, but the more they do that, the more you kind of want to chase them, right? <laughs> so she's kind of the original um, femme fatale also. Um, what else can I say about her? So I said her colors, right? So some things that are sacred to her, um, she was also considered to be the goddess of fragrances. Now some uh, mythologies connect her with um, the god... Um, his name just went out of my head that fast. Oh my gosh. Um, total brain fart because I hear the dogs going. Um, anyway, um, the dog-headed god or jackal-headed god. Um, his name's going to pop into my head in, in just a second. Um, she. Some mythologies connect her um, with him as the god of um, Anubis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's time to eat, guys. Anubis. <laughs> Some mythologies connect Bass with Anubis as a counterpart, um, as he is considered to be the god of embalming and um, sacred ointments. So she is the goddess of fragrance and um, beautiful scents and perfume and, and the flowering things, right? So um, in setting an altar to her, I have some fragrances. Um, I have a bass, um, a bass jar um, that I mentioned in the beginning that has fragrances. You can offer her catnip. Surprise, surprise! You can offer her catnip, and surprisingly, catnip tastes amazing if you boil it. Um, I have made tea out of catnip and it's actually really good for toning the uterus. It's really good for cramps. It's really good for feminine issues actually. Um, and so that's an offering to her. Um, you can actually burn, burn it as incense too. You can mix it into a beautiful incense with flowers. Some flowers that are sacred to her uh, are lilacs. Um, I also had roses on the altar for her and then I decided to um, change it to uh, there are purple and white lilacs there are some cat's tails of different types there's some ferns there and then there's also some pussy willows so um, you can offer her flowers on her celebration day and also a feast because it's called the feast of best so you want to offer her if this is something you bother with but it's something that I bother with um, so you can offer her things that um, she would like to eat so think about what you would give a really um, sacred cat in your life so um, contrary to popular belief milk is actually bad for cats so I would give her um, soy milk or almond milk almond um, is great um, honey sweet things um, even though cats can't usually taste sweet things, but um, cinnamon is one of the scents that uh, is associated with her. So I'm actually making, uh, I'm going to take a bread and toast it, uh, a sweet uh, sweet bread and toast it and add cinnamon and butter and anise. Um, actually, quite a few of her sacred herbs and spices are... The same as Ocean, interestingly. 
Um, what else can I tell you about Bast? So she's recently come back into my practice as um, the guide that has given me the most directive right now. And the funny thing is when, when a deity steps forward, when an archetype steps forward, however you, however you do it, I work with deity in a personified form because it helps me to make contact with, um, with some form of source that I can hold in my consciousness. It's too hard to think about source as being all of these things. This giant amorphous smoke, <laughs> right? So connecting with um, some form of source, even limited form, allows me to be as devotional as I am. And if you're, you know, on this channel, you're a witchy inclined, you know that it's difficult. Um, it's not impossible. There are plenty of secular witches, but f if you are a devotional person, it can be difficult to to maintain um, a strong devotional practice um, without including personified deity. Um, I've tried just working with nature, um, but it's very difficult to bow to the wind, <laughs> right? Um, so. When a deity comes back in or comes in, period, I've always had this belief that, yes, you can reach out to whomever you like, you whatever idea of one piece of source that you connect with, you can absolutely reach out to that energy of source and say, hey, I want to learn from you. But in my personal experience, I'm not saying this should be true for everyone or that this is the way that it works, but in my personal experience... When a deity has come to me or I have been divinely led to a deity, I tend to have a more, um, I tend to have an easier time connecting with that deity. I tend, it tends to feel a little faster and a little smoother um, because they're already asking for you. They're already saying, hey, I see you and I know you need something and I can give you that something. And you might not be looking for me, but I'm looking for you. Um, I've mentioned before that uh Osir or Osiris is my godfather and I never actually reached out to Osir consciously he came in very loudly in a very particular moment and said hey you didn't call for me but I've come anyway and so I knew from that moment on that he was kind of here around my head kind of there and I do have a hard time incorporating the divine masculine in my practice and it's something that I, I want to be able to do um, I'm trying to open myself up to Anubis, but I have had a very difficult time doing that. So I said all that to say, when Bast first came into my consciousness, um, I was learning a lot about love. And I was learning some things about my own sexuality, being a queer woman. I was learning a lot about um, stepping into my own power as a woman. I was in my very young 20s. Um, as I said, she was the first deity that I worked with. And it was something that um, when I read about her, it was like everything just kind of clicked into place for me. I don't remember how I was drawn to her, but some things kind of led me to her, some synchronicities. And when I started reading about her, it was like I was remembering something very ancient and it felt as if I already know this lady. And I've called her Lady Bast ever since. Um, sometimes, you know, when I'm feeling a little silly, I'll say, Auntie. <laughs> but I've, I felt this really strong acknowledgement that I had already known her and it was not difficult at all to connect with her. Now, I'm not saying that if I had just read about her and felt drawn to her and just started chatting her up that I would have had necessarily a different experience. But for me personally, her reaching out to me through these various synchronicities kind of allowed me to tap in a little easier. And as I've moved around in my practice and had different moments and, and different parts of my experience, and I think it's a wonderful thing. I need a little bit of 
a little wine. It's very good to have wine on the Feast of Bast day. Um, there's a lot of free love and sensuality and wine drinking. It's kind of like the female version of uh, any celebration that would have been done for Dionysus. Um, uh, I heard a lot about raising of skirts. Girls dancing around and raising up their skirts. I won't be doing that, but well, maybe because she loves music. So I'm probably going to play some music and dance and play her sistrum. I have a sistrum. Well, it's kind of like a sistrum. It's a more modern version of a sistrum. It's not an exact sistrum. And also castanets. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I just remember this. Castanets are sacred to her. So... Uh, you can play these. I used to play these in my band. Anyway, it's easier to play with not holding a phone. Anyway, um, so when she came into my life, I was really at a point where I was trying to step into my feminine power. I was trying to step into my career as a creative person, as an actress, as a musician. I was um, trying to figure out all these different sides of my personality um, and sides of myself. And um, she came in in this very kind of like powerful but sensual way and it was something that I had never possessed. I had never felt like I was a sexy person. I had never felt like I was a sensual person. I had just always felt kind of like a girl and Bass came in and kind of gave me womanhood. She kind of came in and said, I know you're a woman. <laughs> I'm gonna help you find that. Um, and it felt kind of like I said, remembering I've always had this obsession with cats. Um, I've always been compared to cats and having a very feline personality. And when I was a kid, I always wanted cats, but I wasn't allowed to have them because of allergies. And as I've gotten older, my allergies have gotten a lot less. So anyway, I just had all of these synchronicities and similarities in life where I felt like there was a reason why I was supposed to work with her. And um, she has stayed in my practice kind of, you know, louder sometimes, quieter sometimes, but as I said, I've always had a shrine for her. So um, several years ago, I was walking home from, uh, I had taken the train home from work. And this is when I was in a band. So this is several years ago, I'm walking home and I had just started praying internally for direction, um, that I was feeling very kind of blocked in my career and in my writing and I was like, I need some help, I need some direction, I'm feeling a little, funky and lost and weird. And I kid you not, um, I said, I need a sign that I still have help because I'm feeling kind of lost, like help guys. And I kid you not, a black cat leapt up on top of, uh, there was like a, a, a brick railing, I guess, or wall, like a short brick wall. Like I was walking down a neighborhood and she leapt up onto this wall and she sat down and she just kind of stared at me. And I just kind of stared at this cat like, hello. <laughs> and usually, you know, cats will run from you, right? Um, strangers, they'll usually run and hide and shrink down. She just kind of looked at me and I just looked back at her and we had this exchange and it was like everything in my heart was going, I'm still here for you. And it was a beautiful reminder to call on her every now and again. It was a beautiful reminder. And so that's probably been about five years ago now. And as I said, I've worked with Oshun for a number of years, about four years. Um, I've worked with Lakshmi. I've kind of, you know, moved around in different parts of my path. Um, and recently, um, over here now where I have my, it's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of light. I have a Buddha sitting there anyway. That's next to my altar. Um, and I just kind of have like a smaller shrine that I keep over there. And I had Bast, Bast, sh I can't. The shrine for Bastet was over there. And um, I noticed that one of my cats, Jasper, um, I consider both of them my familiars, but Jasper is the one that's kind of a little bit more, she'll really grab my attention about certain things. So she jumped she started jumping up there and rubbing her face on Bastet's face. 
and on her ears and like she would just get up there and do that and I was like what is she doing and she had never done that before and I've always had a shrine to bass and she's never done that before but all of a sudden about a month ago she started doing that and I noticed every day when I'd come home from work and I'd come into the room and I'd say hi to her and you know open the window for them and put their food down and I noticed that she would be rubbing her face all over bast and so and the last two weeks I just kind of started chatting with her again and I said I feel like you're kind of reaching out for me again and I feel like unsure about that because I'm still very heavily working with Oshun and so I went to Oshun in prayer and I said am I getting some wrong signals and she said no I'm stepping back for a moment and it felt I felt really sad so th that's another part of this video is just acknowledging if you work with different deities if you are an eclectic witch you can tend to you know not stay with the same deities all the time which is something I've always wanted to do but I've not been granted that um it can feel a little sad when a deity steps back and a new one steps forward it's exciting but it also can feel like oh why are you leaving like I've been forming this really beautiful like mother-daughter relationship with you and she said you need a new mom and this one, she's been with you forever. And so I've just been kind of rediscovering my relationship with Lady Bast. And um, it's been a really beautiful, soft re-entry into practice with her. And um, I had started studying Kemetic spirituality a few years back. Um, and it didn't quite feel right for me at that time. And I'm kind of allowing myself to read up on it again now. Um, not saying I'm changing religions or doing anything like that. But I'm just kind of allowing myself to be in a space of learning more about myself spiritually, about my heritage as uh, an African queen. Um, I'm just allowing myself to be gently guided by the guides. So... On today, April 15th, um, whenever you watch this, um, today is the festival or feast of Bastet. And some ways that I am going to honor her, as I said, I'm going to play some beautiful music. She loves dance. She spreads joy. She's the energy also of love and fertility and birth. And so I'm going to write out some petitions for some things that I'm wanting to birth in my life. And I'm going to do some some sexy fertility dancing. <laughs> um, and I'm going to take a sacred bath um, full of um, beautiful essential oils. I love working with um, frankincense. And um, I have an oil that I have made specially for her for anointing. And it's got life everlasting. It's got some rose petals in it as well. And it smells amazing. Um, and as I said before, I have been cooking some things that will be offered to her. In addition to, I'm going to be offering her some red wine when I do my prayers this evening. So yeah, um, not a short video as I had hoped, but... <laughs> If you guys know Gemini's, it's very hard for us to say things succinctly. Sorry. I keep telling myself I'm going to make notes so that I can follow a very, like, succinct process. But I think when I'm just being myself and chatting, it usually feels better. Anyway, if you have kemetic practices, I would love to hear about them. Um, if there's something that you want me to talk about, I'd love to do that. Um, I encourage you to um, add this to your the time that we're in. We're coming up on a Libra full moon, which is all about the emotional self and the emotional body. Um, I encourage you to surround yourself with a lot of self-love. I was wearing a rose quartz today. Um, and to get ready for the juicy Beltane coming up this weekend. I'm so ready for Beltane. I've got a flower crown, a new one. 
it's up there it's kind of hard to show you <laughs> I've got a new flower crown and I'm just looking forward to bringing all of this sensual feminine um, empowerment to my celebrations this spring and early summer so hotep and blessings